everyone. Welcome to the Art of NFT Business. I'm Jonathan Goodman, owner of Trigonal, and my co-host is Florian Velo, professional soccer player. Continuing in our theme of interviewing leads for NFT projects, we'll be interviewing Matt and Ralph from the Chronicles of Dr. Zamnes. We're going to talk to them in just a moment, but now a word from my lawyers. This is not financial advice and should not be taken as financial advice. This is an entertainment show. The views and opinions expressed on this show are purely speculative and do not guarantee any specific results. Before investing, you should speak to a financial advisor. We are not financial advisors. So now let's welcome our guests, Matt and Ralph, the creators of the Chronicles of Dr. Zammies, a battle card game on the Wax Network. So the storyline is, and I'll let these guys talk about this more, but let me give you a brief description. So when a mysterious virus infects his community, the quirky Dr. Zamis desperately quests across his fantastical world to find the cure. He discovers the illness was engineered as part of a sinister interdimensional plot threatening not only his world, but all existence in the multiverse. The card game is expected to launch in Q1 of 2022, and we've got a bunch of questions for Matt and Ralph. How are you guys today? Doing fantastic. Aloha. Yeah, thanks for having us on your show. Really excited. Excellent. So tell us the story behind the Chronicles of Zamzi. And am I pronouncing it right? Say it for me. It's, it's called the Chronicles of Dr. Zamzi. 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 Yeah, Zamzi. And, and, um, I got the idea back in college, like not to date myself, but who cares, 20 years ago. And uh, I was in art school and I was collecting uh, like vintage medical supplies just for fun, just to, you know, populate my studio. And I started drawing these weird robot or uh, doctor, you know, and I did this painting actually uh, of, of this doctor in this fantasy world and this like apple character and just weird worm creature he's writing and everything. And all my friends were like, there's something there, you could, dude, you got to like uh, turn that into something. So I, I created a story. I, I had the idea of like a virus even back then. And over the past 20 years, I've just done a ton of paintings uh, in that world called the world that he lives in called Galligan. And uh, I, I started a, a really uh, unsuccessful storybook app for the iPad around the chronics of, of Dr. Zamzi. And, uh, and unfortunately, that, that fell apart. But it wasn't until like around this time last year, uh, my partner, uh, Rolf, uh, and I got together and, and he was like, dude, if I don't tell you to get into NFTs, someone else will. And so uh, I pitched him the, the Chron for Dr. Zamzi. And, and ever since then, we, we partnered uh, developing the world even more. There's tons of lore. Our trading cards all have, uh, you know, stories on the back of them. And it's just been a wild ride of developing an entire potential franchise at the level of Harry Potter or Star Wars uh, through NFTs. So, yeah, and it's, it's hard to believe we've been doing this for a year. I mean, we we started off small, you know, just taking day by day. Uh, putting this world together and taking Matt's sort of dormant idea, but fantastic idea that he just wasn't, he didn't have time to develop it because he's been working for other people's projects, you know, for years. And we just, this year we had a chance to just go all in on our own project. And I'm very thankful for crypto in general, because uh, if it wasn't for the Celsius network, which is a, it's actually a centralized uh, finance thing on the web, uh, I got in early and I was able to get enough income from that to basically go all in on this and quit my job. And we just started off small, like, you know, meeting once a week. And then we were able to launch our first series and just sell the entire thing out. So we were like, okay, I think we got something here. And that's when we created our LLC. And just since then, we've been just working on expanding the the universe and then you know, we've always, we're, we come from entertainment. And so the goal, the main goal of all of this is to get some kind of a live action or animated series developed where we can really tell the full story for all, all different audiences to see. And then also to have our NFTs be, have a utility that'll work in these two games we're developing, one a battle card game and one a full 3D adventure game where you can explore the world and, and your NFTs are used in the game. 
That's amazing. And you're on the Wax Network. I've never heard of the Wax Network. So, so explain to me what that is and what the advantage is. Everybody's on OpenSea, but I, I've never heard of the Wax Network. Right. So the Wax Network, it stands for Worldwide Asset Exchange. And it came from uh, a company. Uh, it, it originally came from this company called Opskins, where, you know, a lot of pretty much for, since the beginning of time, if you bought a skin or a weapon or something in a game, it's locked in the game. And so what Opskins had done was through OpenSea, before they changed their, ter their, their terms, you could actually buy and sell skins on this Opskin website. But then, but then um, uh, th that ended. So they actually created their own blockchain, which is if, if you, I can give you some links and if you do some research, it's one of the highest volume NFT sites. And part of the reason is because it's proof of stake. So there's no fees for transferring NFTs to one another. So um, Wax actually started on Ethereum, but because the, you know, the gas fees were so crazy, it was an ERC-20 token, but then it moved over to this EOS-based, uh, completely native uh, Wax blockchain just to avoid those fees that, you know, if you have a dollar or two dollar item, it doesn't make sense to, for it to have a fifty dollar, you know, transfer fee. So uh, I think that's what Ethereum is also moving towards that as well to move away from the proof of uh, work to the proof of stake. So, yeah, yeah. we're going to a little later in the show after your interview, uh, Florian and I are going to talk about what happened with the SOS token and what that means for OpenSea. I think I think OpenSea, I think a lot of people are. Uh, really questioning the fact that they're buying these NFTs and then sometimes sp spending double and triple the amount on gas. And it's not, you know, a lot of people will argue, oh, because it's on the Ethereum blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain is so important. But, you know, I was in the dot, dot coms originally. And so I know the importance only comes down to if the general audience is going to actually make a purchase like that. And I think a lot of people are stopping and saying, I'm not willing to pay those, those high gas fees. And so any other network is fine. Um, so I think, I think you made the right choice there in, in going with the wax. It sounds like it's also giving you kind of more uh, expandability in terms of what you can create, right? Yeah, I mean, and also uh, the Wax blockchain is building a bridge. Well, there's already a bridge to the Ethereum network. And so the, the idea is for Ethereum customers to actually utilize the Wax blockchain to transfer and it can go back and forth between the Ethereum blockchain, but they can actually use the Wax blockchain to transfer their NFTs back and forth. Um, so that's something in development as well. That's very cool. Yeah. So surprisingly, like... When I first got into NFTs, the first wallet that I actually downloaded was Wax. Don't ask me why I did that or how, what was the reason behind it. But I think it's cool that you guys are on this blockchain because it's, it, it creates a more affordable NFT with, with a really cool story. And, and for people that are just getting into it, I think it's the perfect like thing to get started with. Uh, you get your hand, hands used to it. And then as we're going to talk about later, I'm sure like the project, the story, the art, what you guys are planning to do in next year is going is awesome. So I think it's a really interesting project to get into it if you haven't done anything with NFT yet. Well, I, I, I mean, it's just as an artist, I look at the you know the way it's designed, the the uh, the UI on Atomic Hub, how easy it is, the the style of their the the, the layout of things, the way that they you know just make it so visually easy to get into a wallet. And then just search for NFTs and, and buy things. It's just a juicy, fun experience. It's not complicated. You don't feel like you need to be a coder or get into programming in order to like collect NFTs. It feels and, and and Wax is just a very specific place for NFTs. That's that's got its own agenda and is not uh, like Ethereum in a lot of ways. Um, what we discovered, you know collaborating with some other people that wanted to do some NFTs with us on Ethereum is we're, we're big on story. And, and so what Wax allows us to do is create multiple backs to our, our NFT front fronts to our cards. So we have like our, you know, our art is the front of the card. And then we have all these backs that have the story and all their uh, interesting content lore. And, and you can't do that on Ethereum. It's literally like one JPEG and that's it. And that's the NFT. And so 
uh, we've we've kind of been creating in a way like a, a graphic novel, you know, through NFT form. Because as as you collect our NFTs, you're also able to read the the content and learn more about what's going on with the art on the front of the card. So we're, we're very grateful to be working with Wax because of that. Yeah, every painting, every beautiful painting that Matt has done, just has again on the back. It we call it the back, but it's like another plate. And sometimes there's three plates because you know we have the main the main painting and then multiple plates with the story. So every one of our NFTs, you're going to get a full story to give meaning and value to the actual painting that you're looking at. And sometimes uh, those we, plates have like some pretty substantial art on the backs of them that are equivalent to the front. So it's almost like you're getting multiple NFTs in a way uh, through one through one purchase. Uh, and our, our kind of our kind of main focus on everything is just to have the highest quality original art and story. Well, I, I want to come back to what you're saying. I think the most important is the art. And that's the main reason how we connect it. Because when I saw the art, it reminded me of that game I used to play when I was a, a kid on the Nintendo 2DS, something called Professor Layton. It was kind of a similar character, similar enigma kind of stuff. And I was like, wow, I really I think it's really cool. And this is. Just how we, we got started and how we, we, we got to talk and, and how they're here today. And I think for me, art is the most important when you get into NFT. If you if you are trying just to like flip or anything, just you have to get your hands on first. And then you need to find a project that you like or you interact with or you you have a connection with. And and I really I really like the art. That's the main reason why I I, I follow up with, with, with this project. Um, but like to come back to it, like how explain a little bit to us how you buy your cards on the Wax blockchain. I know there's different type of sets. You release set one and set two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, walk us through that. Yeah. So, I mean, I started off as a collector and then the, one of the coolest things about the Wax blockchain is just the whole community. You can ask questions and, and, and people will show you how to make the NFTs, but to, to buy our NFTs specifically, you can go to our website, drzamzi.com, and we have multiple buttons. Um, buy, you can buy the primary product. We still have a few leftover primary um, uh, card packs, and then most of it's on the secondary market. So people can, that's, that's one of the biggest draws to NFTs is you can own part of this project and then sell it on the marketplace, the Atomic Hub uh, marketplace, you can search for Dr. Zamzi on there. Um, and then you can see all of our cards that are for sale from other people that have purchased our cards. And um, yeah, I, I noticed you had a link there. So this is the yeah, Atomic this is up Hub. now, right? Yep. This, this yeah. is what this is. So, yeah, so in other words, Go ahead. So, so this is almost like a, like a trading post. Yes. Yes. This is a marketplace trading post where these are all these cards here are individuals that have purchased, you know, multiple Dr. Zamzi cards and they might have an extra card and they're, they're, they're selling it on the marketplace and you can, you can put it for any price you want. But what's pretty cool is um, when you, you know, if you want to post one, they make it really easy. So um, I guess we're not able to show it here, but basically if you go to your inventory and we'll have to get you a cloud, uh, what get you a wax wallet and stuff. Um, but if you go to your inventory, you can click on to put it for sale and it'll tell you, you know, what everyone else is selling it for. So you can kind of base your price off the market price. You know, if you want to sell it fast, you can do it a little below what the average market price is. And it'll show you all the sales of what people have sold it for. So it gives you a lot of information about, you know, for the, the seller, you know, to make a decision on what to what price to put it at for sale. Can you just explain what blends are? Sure. Yeah, blends are a really cool fact, uh, a really cool thing that we do. And so if you go to drzamzi.com, you can see we have a tab for blends. And what that is, is it creates a recipe where if you collect a certain, the cards for the recipe, you insert them into the interface and it burns them. So they're gone forever. But then what you get is a more rare card uh, in, as a result. So it, it does two things. One, it constricts the supplies of the cheaper sort of more. So usually the recipe is made up of cards that are easier to find. And so when those are burned, there's less of them. And then the person who burned them also gets this 
very rare card. So that it's a win-win situation. And it's, it's, it, I mean, it's yeah, really it, fun it, for it, us it too. Makes, to, it just makes the cards that are, that are on the cheaper side more valuable, but then also if people want to get rid of them, it makes it available to get a rare card. So it's kind of a, like you said, a win-win. And we'll That's use brilliant. like promo cards yeah. too, like promo cards that we just gave away for free people if they already have them or they can just buy them for really cheap on the secondary market and then you insert them in burn them and then we have a really good time making the blend cards because you know they'll have extra plates and art and things so it's really fun to share more of the story on the blend cards are you actually taking like elements from card one and then elements from card two and you're blending that together for a rarer card or does it work uh, you are. Wow. wow yeah. Cool. So some of them are just purely like you blend it and you get a whole new card, but some of them you have to, you get like the first version of the card and you blend it to a better version of that same card. Oh. So for example, you get this uh, Catrice Middleton is she looks like this defenseless daughter on a farm, but she's actually this fantastical warrior. And so you have the first card. And then when you blend it to the black series card, it ends up becoming, and so right now it's just showing the blends that are available, but uh, we've had multiple blends and as soon as they're unavailable, they don't, you can't find them on here uh, anymore. But, but I was just giving an example. Uh, so this, there's a Vizdedra card there too, which was originally, it was a different Vizdedra card. And then it, it got blended into this card. If you go back to that blends page, I can show you something really quick. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah, so if you click on the three dots by Vizdidra, see those yeah. three dots? Yeah. And click on View Template. Uh, anybody can, you know, without purchase, you can go look and see what the NFT looks like by checking out the template. So this is really cool here. You're going to be able to see the, uh, as soon as it loads up, you'll see there's Vizdidra. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the, the backs, which have the story. So... Uh, these we'll pieces here that are going to load in a second. Yeah, so those are loading up. Uh, but once you click on those, you'll get the full backstory. And this one's really cool because it kind of talks about Vizdidra. Uh, in, in, in the current story, she's sort of an, uh, an evil character. But, you know, evil characters don't believe what they're doing is evil, right? So this sort of gives you more of the story of, like, how she was you know, she used to be someone that was not considered evil sort of in the past. And so you get to read this story. And if you click on the, if you click on the plate, um, this plate that, that expands, it makes it bigger. So then you can read. Yes. Yeah, so if you click oh, on that story, yeah. so then you can uh, have a few minutes and enjoy the story. And I'll, um, I'll just uh, chime in here really quick. Yeah. So if you go back to that first uh, page that had the story on it, uh, we have this primer uh, that we created at yeah. the bottom, uh, these symbols. And when we first launched our set one and, and set two, we had this puzzle system. So you could actually like try and unlock this puzzle and the clues were in the cards. So you had to like read all the cards. And then we had like people working day and night to try and discover, you know, the answers to these puzzles. Then you can go to our website, punch them in. And if you won, you won like a rare one of one uh, NFT that was yeah. specific for the, for that puzzle. Oh, and wow. so people got really into it and my hat is off to Rolf because he figured all that out. Um, it was kind of an incredible feat. And uh, we, we plan on doing more of those. Uh, we're actually going to launch a set three here coming up uh, in a couple months. Uh, I believe in about a month, actually. Um, and so we're really excited. So we're definitely going to do some puzzles with that launch as well. So more puzzles to come. So, we, yeah, we embed into the NFT these clues and then... Um, then the people, I mean, it's, it's incredible. People just with very little information can figure out these puzzles and people have a lot of fun doing it. I and so we want, I mean, my brain doesn't work like that, but these people were working day and night to try and figure it out. But we're planning to also on Telegram to try and understand what, what to do. And, and that's going to, that's going to carry over into our 3d adventure game as well. We're going to have, it's going to be sort of a world that you explore and there's puzzles that you have to figure out to unlock the next uh, gateway to the next path on the journey. Wow. Yeah. So, Actually, our, our yeah, so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
We, I was just going to say our 3D adventure game is uh, kind of taking off. We we have a skeleton crew of 3D modelers and a technical artist, and they're they're building out Dr. Zamzi's laboratory, which is behind my back here. And we're, we're building that out as kind of a test bed, um, and we're doing it in Unity. Uh, we may transition over to Unreal, uh, but uh, right now it's, it's pretty fun. We're, we're getting a lot of hero assets and props, and we're all putting it in. A uh, part of the story for Dr. Zamzi is when he finds out that this virus is attacking the plant life and killing the giants in Galagan, uh, he takes a sample and brings it back to his lab. And when he looks at it in a microscope, he's like, I need to actually go into the, uh, the sample. So he has this like mech suit with these giant rings that rotate and shrink him down into the micro realm. And so there's a whole part of the story where he's floating around in the fluid of this virus. And he discovers that there's like this, um, uh, these internauts, these like bad soldiers that are coming from Viz Deja's world that are spraying the virus. And so he gets attacked and, and he just discovers that this problem is actually a lot larger than it really is. But um, that experience of, of shrinking down the suit is what we're trying to actually achieve in the test bed of the 3D game. And it will be part of the uh, gameplay is actually experiencing that. And we actually already have the suit shrinking with the rings moving and everything and in proxy form, which is a, a term we use when you're just kind of uh, roughing things out. Um, and, but our technical artist is doing great. Top of the 3D game, we have an animated series that we're uh, deeply involved in. Uh, we partnered with uh, Matt Lyon. He's a, a really amazing writer from uh, the film world and animated world of making movies. And uh, he's a creative director at Lakeside Animation in Toronto. Uh, and so um, our goal is to finish the, the 10 episode treatment here in the next month. Um, we already have a plan to potentially get a major actor on board. The idea is that as each episode launches on a streaming service or wherever, uh, for a limited time, right after it, it airs, you're going to be able to collect NFTs from that episode. And then those NFT trading cards are also going to be able to, to transition into our card game. So you'll be able to slide them into the card game and play the card game as well. And then that goes for the 3D adventure game as well. So you'll be able to collect NFTs on the 3D adventure game watch the Dr. Zamzi episode for that week, collect those NFTs, play the card game. So it's all going to be this ecosystem that's going to be rotating as entertainment. Right. So that's our, our long-term roadmap plan there. Uh, that was going to be my next question. I think uh, if to summarize it, I've seen that you've released 121 different NFTs over two sets, if I'm correct. Uh, I think you're planning on, on revealing the third set in a month. That's what you said as well. Mm -hmm. um, so... I, we, we all know now that rarity is a big part of NFT. Do you, you how can you tell those guys where they can find the rarity on, on, on either the Atomic Hub or the Wax or your uh, website? Is there a way to find which card are the rarest? And also, is, is there a difference between animated card and non animated card? Because I don't know if people have seen on the website, you can see there's different cards. Some are moving, some are just like, uh, pick no totally. pictures like draws uh, so we, which is really cool so I just want to know like the bit the difference yeah there we uh, I mean just from talking to you Florian too I it gave me the idea to create a whole ranking page uh, but right for right now you would go to the Atomic Hub website and you can sort of you can search by the it goes like common uncommon rare epic legendary mythic and that will give you an idea of how rare it is, but you would, you'd pretty much need to do some searches. And if you look at the actual card on the Atomic Hub website, it'll tell you how many of those exist. Uh, so some of them, um, there are only five exist or only one exists. And so, you know, those are the most rare. And then some will be like 500 or, or 100 exist. And so, but in general, if you're on the Atomic Hub website, there'll be a drop-down menu on the left where you can search the Dr. Zamzies by those those rarities, common, uncommon that I just mentioned. You're you're gonna do some some exciting like reveal or some exciting like launch of special rare cards in the upcoming weeks or days. Uh, yeah. Let us know a little bit more about that. So we have from the very first series, we have these extremely rare items that were sort of a marketing gimmick at the beginning, but we knew that once the marketing, once the audience got bigger, then we could release these, what you're talking about, like extremely rare items. So we have a, we have about four or five different packs that have these one of one have one has a one of one card and the other three packs have like a one of four card 
Uh, and those, those are extremely rare and we're going to have the auctions actually, we're going to do those as an auction. You guys are also doing a documentary for this whole entire process, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, my, my good friend, colleague, John Helms, who I think I mentioned earlier in this podcast, you know, he, he was a visual effects supervisor for, um, uh, uh, the prequels, Star Wars prequels. Uh, the goal for that documentary is to put that on a streaming service and festivals and just get the general public maybe on Netflix or something to um, understand what this whole marketplace is, is about and how to jump in and what it's like to create stuff, create NFTs in this space. How do you take a card that has consumer value and then stake it so that you're actually making money off of that card? That, that's a fascinating yeah. to me. Explain that to me. How does that work? There's, there's multiple ways to make money too. So um, when you stake on when staking, the card actually leaves your wallet. It's no longer there. But what happens is you're issued an exact replica that's called a lease. It actually says lease on it. So you can then sell that to anybody else. And it gives you all the attributes in the game as well. So if the original NFT is, say, like $1,000 or $500, it's a lot you could sell the lease to somebody else for $10 or $20 and they could use that in the game and have the skin in the game. Uh, so it's like, that's like another, for like, like for like a 24 hour period, you can lease it for like 24 hours. So if you can actually if you wound up with this amazing card, you could actually lease it out almost uh, very similar, like Axie infinity, right? Yes. So right now, actually there's a range. You can actually go from 24 hours to 365 days. So you can make it, that's right now the range. It can be, the lease can last for a full year or a day. I mean, all the way, anywhere in between. You could do it seven days, 100 days. It's right. up to you. Like when you actually stake it, you choose how long you want it to be staked for. And can um, multiple people then utilize that lease? Uh, if I'd say 365 yeah. days, that doesn't mean that one person is now leasing right. that for 365. It's in that pool. And if I go in and I want to play the game that day, I can see what's available for lease. And if it's purchasable, if it's, if it's affordable to me, I can actually make my card deck off of somebody else's leased cards. Yeah. So that, that lease will exist for 365 days. To, doesn't matter who has it. That's so incredible. it can be passed around to other people and you can even just transfer it to your friend as well. And then, and, and then is there additional staking? I wouldn't necessarily call that staking. I would call that leasing. Is there staking where I'm just basically saying I'm going to yeah. leave the card in here and somehow the card makes money itself? Yes. yes. Yeah. So the Crazy. way the staking, <laughs> so when you stake it and you get the lease, uh, right when you, st when you, the, the least, the actual lease NFT, you, you put crypto into that. So you, you would, again, then you would stake to the lease, the void crypto, and you get APR yield from that. Our white paper <sighs> comes out, it's going to explain more about what our tokenomics model is for our battle game. So we're going to have these sort of money generating cards, commemorative cards that you can purchase, and they're not going to be cheap, but Basically, what you'll be able to do is generate your own NFTs that you can then sell on the marketplace as battle units in our in our card game. So, so there'll be a, it, it'll almost be like an Axie Infinity sort of, sort of thing where you have this Axie that generates additional NFTs into your inventory that then you can um, <laughs> sell to other people as well. It's a way to make money playing the game. The game itself is modeled after Clash Royale. So you're going to have your trading cards that are going to be in your deck. And depending on who's attacking you, you're going to throw down those cards. Our initial launch is just going to be with the cards themselves and some animations that come off of it to attack. But eventually we're going to get into 3D characters that are uh, morphed from the card once you place it down. And then you'll see them all crawling around and attacking each other and stuff. And um, yeah, we're just really excited about that kind of business model. We think it's a, a you know, and our game designer uh, uh, team, the game design team is, is modeling off of Axie Infinity for the uh, economics of all that. So I think we're just going to be in a really good place to launch a game that people are going to not only love to collect the cards and play the game, but uh, generate some capital to achieve our goals. You've kind of touched about it, but what, what are the future collaboration that you have in the works right now for early 2022? 
I think the biggest one is Yoshi Drops. Um, you know, Michael Blue is, uh, he created uh, Legend.Art. They're an um, online NFT gallery uh, on, the, on Ethereum. And they have ties to Christie auctions. Uh, in fact, some of the people that work for Christie's are working with uh, Legend.Art. And so um, the idea for this collaboration is called uh, the Gazers. <laughs> you know, like you're gazing into the sky, the Gazers. And uh, there's three different environments. There's uh, Morning Gazer, uh, Night Gazer, and Day Gazer. And uh, there's been three separate EDM uh, tracks that have already been created for each. And they're beautiful. They're freaking amazing. I'm a huge fan. Um, and then we're going to print out uh, these really amazing prints of these environments, uh, frame them, and then we're going to launch the an auction for each piece. And um, the price point of those is still being discussed, but it's pretty expensive. And the amount of marketing that's going into this is pretty crazy um, with uh, the guys from Legend.Art that uh, Michael Blue's company also owns. And so uh, it's going to launch on, on uh, Ethereum, on OpenSea, I believe around March. And, uh, and then we're going to do some generative pieces too. We're going to break up these super wide environments into like six different separate pieces. Those are also going to be printed physically. So when you buy the NFT, the one of one of that image, you're also going to get the opportunity to just have us ship you the actual original print as a, as a collectible. Yeah. And they're going to be tagged with a very specific um, seal on the actual print that's going to have, uh, say, you know, have my signature with a one of one. We may do a series two where it's, you know, uh, number two in the series and uh, three, but then the, the first one's going to be very extremely valuable and it's going to be, you actually get a physical asset with your NFT, which is pretty cool. And then we're going to do some generative pieces where you're going to have avatars like uh, these weird cubicle creatures and uh, round uh, mechanical robots and just this strange, wild, surreal world that I've created. Salvador, Salvador Dali-esque, I guess you could say. Um, and each, each avatar is going to be generative. So it's going to have different hats, you know, different buckles. Maybe they'll have like a heart versus like a cross or something on the chest. And those will be different colors. And uh, those are going to be minted differently as well. Um, so very board ape, board ape Yacht Club kind of style to this launch. Very cool. I, I know that you guys already have a podcast that you've started releasing, right? What is that? That expands the universe and expands the storyline? Yes, we do a podcast uh, pretty much. Every, or we've done it every Monday for about for 19 weeks. Uh, the first time we didn't do it was just this last week because of the HODL, the HODL days. So mm -hmm. we we did a uh, we did a, a special promotion called HODL days, like H-O-D-L, uh, the crypto term. And we, we weren't able to do a podcast this week, but for 19 previous weeks, we've been doing one and we basically talk about what we're up to, what Dr. Zanzi up to, but also stuff in pop culture, just the cool stuff in crypto news and in sci-fi fantasy. When do you think the gameplay is going to come out? Uh, how many more releases are we seeing? And then if you could just explain what the difference between buying single pieces and packs are and, and what how many come in a pack and how does that all work? Yes. So the, it's really cool what the wax, like I don't know if Ethereum allows for this, but on wax, you can actually collect the packs. The packs are an NFT and it's like a traditional pack of cards. Like if you get a, a baseball pack of cards, uh, you, you can, and, and depending on the mint number, right? So with NFTs, if you have mint number one, it's more valuable than mint number two and so on. So the pack will inside there will have, you know, 10 cards. But what's really cool is you can add a whole experience to opening the pack. So even on our website, if you own a pack, you can go to the unboxing site and you click on your pack and you click open and you get to actually watch a little movie of inside the world of Galligan and inside the world of Dr. Zamzi. Mm -hmm. There's about a 20 second uh, video that, that appears when you open your pack as it opens up and then your cards pop out. The cards start coming down. You get to see what you, uh, and it's kind of like gambling a little bit, you know, when you open a pack of cards and you find out what you got. So you get to see, Oh, I got that one. Oh, I got this one. Oh, it's so cool. And it's are a they, whole experience. Can I ask, are, are, are the packs randomized? Do you not even know what's in the packs at the time that, that totally you're randomized? Yeah. So there's a way to basically put,
put a percentage on each card. So the more rare, valuable cards will be hard, way harder to get. So you got to buy a few packs to try to find those. So oh, wow. like we have this black series, uh, which are very rare. And it's a black and white image with multiple extra story images. And so you have to go through a bunch of packs just to get that because it's like a point half a percent chance of getting one of those per pack. So uh, you're stoked if you got one of those because there's only, I think, about 15 uh, that can ever exist for each one of those black series. Wow. Cards. So that would be that, and that's that's a high rare card that could be played in the game and has special features to it so that would be something that i would if i own that then i would lease that out and i could make money off of that yeah i mean that that is that is part of what's coming soon yes but but for right now it's purely just because it's so rare it's like you're paying ten dollars for a pack and you're getting like a, a hundreds of dollars worth of thing that comes out right 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 away that you could sell you know so it's kind of like you're paying ten dollars and now you have this five hundred dollar item that you can sell Wow. Uh, but those will be part of the game uh, interface as well. That's great. And so, so most most of the times you're really buying packs. It's it's more affordable to buy a pack than to start kind of collecting individuals until you know what the full collection series is. Like like Florian, you play Pokemon all the time, and you just recently announced that you had completed your set. Right? Is is that what happened? Yeah, so, it is what happened. But like it it, it is more expensive because nowadays the set that i have is like from is the very first set from like 95 so it's oh, there's wow. no real packs that exist anymore um but if if i was a collector in that specific project and 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 they showed me like the unboxing of of, of a set which is really cool as ralph mentioned because you get that little video of introduction and you get all those cards one at a time and they show you like the the character and then this little story behind it so it, it is a really cool um experience i would definitely suggest buying a, a pack uh i think it's more fun uh this is what i used to do when i was a kid and i'm sure you guys did it as well like when you go buy pokemon cards you you buy the pack and then you're excited to see what you're going to get uh and it, and, it, and it is to this point to this day when you look at youtube videos of guys that have collected like the latest like packs of pokemon they're just super excited to open it um yeah so i think i think it's better to start this way than just start collecting one and ones of of, of the marketplace yeah it's a way more fun experience plus the, the the opening is like we created this animated short to launch set two that's basically launches the whole story narrative this giant that's infected by this virus ends up dying and almost crushes this farm and the people that are on that farm are pivotal to the story but it was just like a a window into what an animated series of this franchise could look like. And so pieces of that are part of the pack opening experience. Yeah. So you get a 20 second video when you open the pack, but if you go to our YouTube and search for Dr. Zamzi, you can watch a two minute version of the video where you get like a much more of the story, but um, you know, 20 seconds is kind of a lot for that. Uh, when you're opening a lot of packs, you can also just skip the story you can watch the video as many times as you want. And you can also skip the video if you just want to see what your cards are. You know, if you're mo opening like 10, 20 packs or something, you can just skip the video as well. You know, quick, I wanted to answer your, your other few questions you had uh, beyond the pack openings. Uh, you guys asked that, uh, you know, how, when are you going to see gameplay? And, uh, you know, when is the game going to come out? Um, this week, I believe we're going to launch our white paper on our website. That's going to lay out a, a full breakdown of what this game actually is and how you're going to be able to incorporate our NFTs into the game. Um, leading into next month, we're going to actually show a rough wireframe of the actual game in, in like actually being played, like playing for real. And we're going to be uh, launching YouTube videos of that. Uh, we're going to see these cards actually working in rough form. Part of the reason for that is because we really rely on Atomic Hub for uh, their banner advertising space. And since we have a game in the works, they have this new rule now. We have to prove that you're actually making a game and show proof in order to There's a lot of fake, a lot, a lot of, of fake, fake games stuff going there. on. Yeah. yeah, everyone's promising a game, but I think there's going to be a crash where not a lot of people are going to be able to actually uh, provide that promise. And right. so the ones that actually know how to do it are going to succeed. So we understand that. Uh, so that's part of the reason why we're going to show actual real gameplay here in the next month. Uh, we have a huge rollout, like 20 different announcements over the next three months. 
on, uh, on different components of the game actually coming online. We're gonna start off with this experience where you can actually incorporate your NFTs with these card frames and customize them before we actually launch the game so you can get familiar with that interface. And then we're gonna launch the game. So I think, you know, realistically, we said Q1 2022 for the game launch, that, uh, you know, card frame experience of, of actually going live and, and uh, customizing your cards will be part of that. Um, but the actual real game launch probably won't happen until Q2 uh, 2022. So we wanted to talk about the year in review, right? Mm -hmm. You and I have both uh, invested a fair amount of money into the crypto space. And we just wanted to go through it, um, talking about crypto, NFTs, DeFi staking uh, and nodes. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about what the SOS versus the OpenSea. Uh, maybe we should start there because that was probably the most interesting thing that happened. Of course, I had been saying to you for weeks, hey, you know, Christmas is going to come around. We're going to have all of these airdrops. We're going to have millions of tokens. It's going to be amazing. And nothing really happened from, you know, I was predicting uh, unstoppable do domains. I was predicting open C. I was predicting MetaMask. We're going to drop like, you know, millions of tokens and none of that happened. But what happened was this company from left field came in and dropped, they were SOS. Uh, and, and honestly, I, I think I've I think I've translated what SOS means, and I'm going to say that in a second because it's very controversial. But we got airdropped all of these SOS tokens. If you were somebody who was on open seas and you were you had bought NFTs or you had traded NFTs, all of this qualified you for what turned out, at least for me, and, and I didn't here's the fascinating thing. The numbers are very interesting because I know people that have put in three, four ETH worth of money. So thousands and thousands of dollars, and they wound up with basically a hundred million tokens. I put in 0.77, which is not even one ETH. So it's not even $4,000. I think I put in basically $3,000 and I wound up with 47 45.7 million SOS tokens. Now, of course, you know, they immediately went up. A lot of people sold. They got a couple of hundred dollars. Maybe they made a thousand dollars off of it. But now the question is, what is this? Why were we given this? And what do they plan to do with this? Because if there's no utility behind it, but here's the thing. I think SOS means stop open C. I think that this was an inside job. I think that someone inside that open C corporation, because they have less than 200 employees, I think they have a ridiculous number, like 20 employees. When they're a billion dollar company, they're not expanding. And they were thinking about going and doing a, a stock option, a stock where everybody would have to buy. And that got a significantly negative feedback from the open sea community and i think people are just fed up i think that people are fed up with the fact that people that open sea isn't uh you know blue chipping a lot of these projects that have been out there you and i both have magic mushroom they still are waiting for their blue check mark um you have uh all of this money that is in open sea now uh, why not turn that around and provide us a token uh, instead of going public on in an old school fashion with the stock market? Stock market just means we're a company, we want more money, you should invest in us and we're going to do great. A token says you've worked with us, you've bought stuff from us, we're going to give you a dividend immediately and you're going to be able to sell that as a token. So I think SOS was an inside job to push OpenSea, to provide tokens to everybody. And now we're going to see. Now we'll see. Now they're behind the eight ball. Because now if you have a computer, competitor who has given everybody who has done transactions in OpenSea's tokens, then OpenSea is really standing there with their pants down saying, okay, well, they have to do something. 
Yeah, I don't. I, you, you're the one who told me about it. Um, we we've discussed it. I'm learning as much as the people who are listening right now. Um, you have done more research than I did. I was really surprised, and I didn't know where that came from. But I think we can expect 2022 to be a big, big year. I think this year, it's still a small world, still a niche the NFTs. Uh, but 2022, with the expansion of like like big people on Twitter, like influencers on Twitter that, that have talked highly about NFTs, that have been involved in NFTs. A lot of big projects are coming like Q1 of 2022. I think it's it's going to become even more overwhelming than it already is. Um, so I think it, it's it's super exciting. And you've, you've mentioned that before. You've been in the, uh, the Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and now we're going to Web 3.0. I think you've been there first two times like deep in the in there so i think you you have a better understanding of what we're going through yeah. uh but i think it, it's going to be exciting scary but mostly exciting yeah uh you tried to get in on the steph curry project tell, tell me about that because we didn't get a chance to talk about that yeah so i was i'm a i'm a bit i'm, I'm not a big fan of nba but steph curry his journey the way he plays the way he handles himself when he, he, he gets off on the field, like everybody talked about it on Twitter and, and, and then he, he, he has made a big, um, like, I think he's best three point shooter in NBA history with 29.74 when he did it, I think it is more now. And he decided to do a drop of NFT of 20, 2974 NFTs on a platform. Uh, I don't remember the name, but you had to connect to this platform uh put funds in your wallet so put five hundred dollars to be able to uh buy one of those nfts uh i was not able to secure uh like to put those funds in because the the website was not allowing me to verify my identity so i had to pass on that but i really liked the project because it was something like it was an athlete that i that I see myself in, like, I love the athlete. I want to support that. And, and especially like hundred percent of the funds went back to a foundation and one of his foundation mm -hmm. as well. Um, so I'm kind of a little bit disappointed not to have been able to, to grab one of those. Um, and, and, and yeah, it was a really cool project. I think, uh, I think if people had the chance to get it, I think they, they made a big, it was a great investment because I'm sure like some of them sold for like, they did, tied to, to, to 2x 3x 4 depending on on the rarity or whatever but uh, it was a cool project for me at least so what do you what did you do better in did you do better in crypto or in nfts when we look at this as a review for the year uh i've been in nfts for like almost two years now mm -hmm. uh crypto sorry for two years oh. so i haven't touched any of the money i put in maybe a little bit more but it was a really good year for me in nfts in terms of learning I think it was a great learning experience with you. We exchanged. Yeah. We had great people on the show that were able to tell us about their project, how they started, how is it going, what they did good, what they did yeah. wrong. Um, I'm also listening to different podcasts, following people on Twitter. We, so I'm, I'm still learning because it's 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 a brand new for everybody. Every Everything is fast-paced. Everything is changing really fast. So I'm still learning, but it, it's been an exciting journey. Um Mm -hmm. I've been able to play with some of the, the money I had in crypto. So I was able to be like, okay, listen, I'm going to put this amount of money and buy like some of the project that I like. We bought Bungie together. Right. Um, I bought other project on my own. Um, the very first NFT I got is from you when I purchased uh, uh, a piece of one of your former, former artists. So mm. it's, it's, it's how we, we got started into NFTs together. Right. And then, since then we've been learning and, and it's been, it's been great in terms of, of the learning experience. Yeah, well, I'm pretty excited for you to come along on the journey for what we're planning for 2022. You know a lot of you know yeah. a lot of the behind the scenes that we can't really talk about, but there's a lot of projects that we're involved in that are going to be very interesting just in terms of technically how do they get off the ground, right? We we understand the marketing side of it, but you know, the technology side and and things are going to change so much in this next year, in this first quarter of 2022, you know, we're going to start seeing, it's funny, you know, we, we spoke to uh, Panda Dynasty, we spoke to, to Ganondorf yet, uh, last week, and, you know, he really kind of, you know, said to me when we were talking about another project, he said, you know, 3D is going to be 2022. And he's so right. 
all of these projects that are launching now, they're all 3D. They all have a tie into the metaverse. And that's what's really going to be super exciting is this shift from the basic PFP to really like an interactive working functioning NFT that's going to have a place in the metaverse. Yeah, I think we, we've seen a shift already from PFP to to like um, uh, like metaverse, like using your avatar in, in a 3D dimension. And now we've seen more and more. 3D project coming out, like one of the most popular coming out is probably Hate Beast when you have to be whitelisted. Um, so everything is fast paced, as we said, everything is changing. Someday, like you're going to get something like Boarded Yacht Club with a lot of utilities. Someday, you're going to buy something like Sandbox, Decentraland, like all those characters to get on, on a gamify play to get to earn tokens. And now people are going for like a 3D kind of like community based utility mixed with like a 3d world metaverse so it's like everything is getting together and yeah it's it's exciting i think now like there's so many many projects coming out um and, and we've learned that the most important is the art and then the community behind it and how can you still engage the community after after you the, the main process so right. is it through gamification is it through merge evans so it's it's important for the people that are launching their nft and you probably know because you have a lot of 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 things coming out in, in next year um how they're going to do that how they're going to be able to engage this community for longer than a few months yeah yeah no it's definitely a challenge i think that as P, as communities make more demands of these projects they're going to really move the needle in terms of what what each nft is going to what the value of each nft is going to be i think that i think crypto punks and i think board api club is still going to be at the top but i think we're going to see some really unique and individualized use of the nft like we're like we saw with dr zamzi's and that's amazing that's going to be an entire game it's incredible. So I just wanted to give everyone an update. Uh, everyone here who's kind of come back on on uh, a couple of episodes here knows that I did some DeFi staking with Metaverse Pro and with Jade Protocol. Uh, so Metaverse Pro has dropped another $40 and Jade Protocol has dropped another $200. So I am not going to make the million dollars in 20 days that I was expecting. And I'm very disappointed in that. I just did Soldier nodes which is uh they're trying to make it a game on the blockchain it's it's fascinating it's a group of uh of french university students uh you will definitely try to get them on the podcast as well and talk to them so we'll we, reach we out to try them. yeah because i've jumped on the discord and i've seen from the few 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 chats that i've been involved in just looking at it i feel like a lot of people were kind of like not angry, but like they had concerns about, and you told me about the concerns about oh, yeah. the project had. Uh, again, like I want to remind people, just use the money that you afford to lose. Like, you know, $800, you probably not really need them. I know people do need so those that, that kind of money, but like if you're willing to lose it, just use it, get, get, get used to the space because it's going to be a big part of, of the future. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I put $300 into Jade Protocol when it was 341 per token. Now it's $23 per token. So, I mean, you can't you can't get upset with that. You just have to know that the money that you staked, I'm going to make more coin. And whether that coin goes up in value at some point, I have more coin than I had before. And leaving things in savings in, a, in an American bank account, you're making less than 1%, significantly less than 1%. So you're literally against inflation, losing money when you're putting it into savings. So why not put it into something like this? Now, soldiers know the reason why I put it in, you know, maybe if I had done a little bit more research, I would have been more hesitant. But I believe that putting money into blockchain, DeFi, NFT, as long as it's not a complete rug pull, and that's not what this is. These guys are really working hard. They've now hired a real tech team, a real finance economics team. They're going to figure this out. But I think that every single project that I've put into, NFT, DeFi, crypto, all of these 
are going to increase by, you know, 2024, 2025, because they were first to be in there. And so when people are looking where to invest, they're going to go with the company. Just the same reason why we do OpenSea, because OpenSea was the first one. They know what they're doing. Yeah, there are other protocols, other other applications out there to use. And now maybe I'll look at Wax, definitely. And I already, I got just got a phantom uh, wallet. I have to expand. So yeah, I exactly. think that that all of it is a great education. Of course, we're super early to the curve. And, uh, you know, in a year or two from now, we're not going to go have people who are just getting into it aren't going to have to do these hurdles like we have to do with the verification and with, you know, the different, uh, the, the main nets and the, and the test nets and all this different stuff that we're learning. It's really quite amazing but i think that that'll all get figured out in the next couple of years yeah i think i think it will be beneficial for the people that start early uh getting to know all like the route you can take to get your first nft to collect what's your strategy do you want to buy and flip do you want to buy and hold do you want to buy into an ft project that you like to support the the, the founders the, the community or there's so many things to take into account that we are still learning and we've been there for a few months already. Um, a year, so, a year. Yeah, a year. Boring. We've so, really been involved in a year, right? Yeah, so you have to get started at some point. I think it's a good time now. Um, jump into Discord, Trigonal, or follow someone on Twitter that you really like. And, and, and I think that's the way to start. Yep. So let's wrap this up. If you like this content, please hit the like button and subscribe and add notifications. Join us on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Discord. You can go to linktree forward slash trigonal for all of our links. We've got some great guests lined up for the current season, including World of Freight out of Estonia and Galactic Stars, the Daves, plus many more. If you are building or have already launched an NFT project and you would like to be a guest on the show, make sure to join our Discord and send me a DM. And of course, we will continue to have a POAP giveaway for each episode, so make sure you watch live. Thank you for watching. Have a happy and successful New Year. Anything you want to add, Florian? No, thanks for following us all along this year. I think next year is going to be a better structure, let's put it that way, uh, uh, podcasts. I think we're going to have great guests. We're going to have more, better content. And I'm excited to see how this space evolves. And happy end of the year. Happy new year for the, for the guy for the, in the next three or four days. And I'll see you next year. Absolutely. I'll see you, Florian, when you get back to the United States. Have a fantastic vacation. Happy new year. Happy Merry Christmas, everything. I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye.